What's happening, folks? Geologist Philip Prince talking today about folding and normal fault movement. Uh, cool sandbox model slices that you're looking at here show some folding uh, related to extensional movement. You can tell that extension has been going on here because the pre-existing bedding has been dropped down along normal faults. And sure enough, if you look closely, they are subtle. There is folding here, uh, like the gentle anticline you see here. That syncline to its left significantly tighter a much more noticeable fold but indeed even if you look at this model there is still disruption to what would have been originally flat dip uh, in the layers of sand here now in these models sand color uh, is to some extent an expression of mechanical property meaning each of the different colored sand layers has a slightly different mechanical behavior uh, and as it turns out that's what's actually causing the folding or the deformation of the uh, of the sand layers here with model movement. Now, trying to demonstrate this in a sandbox model that's moving while you watch, it's pretty tough. I have never been satisfied with the results here doing it in a clear glass sidewall model. So we're going to take a look at it from the top. Um, got a video here that is showing what deformation of these sand packs actually looks like. And if we move along, actually, we'll blow this up. So. Blow this up to full screen here. You can see the extensional movement. A block is moving towards the left of the screen there. So there's your extensional movement. And with movement and accommodation space, I'm adding a little bit more sand to fill that accommodation space, which represents the infilling of sediment into the growing basin uh, if you're scaling this up to an actual tectonic feature. And what we're really interested in here is coming right in this area. Now, yes, this is very subtle, but if you look at this area, you can see downward movement on the left and then downward movement or back rotation and tilting on the right as well, back towards this breakaway scarp here. And indeed, that is where an anticline is forming. Now, what does the inside of this model look like? You already saw it. This is it. Uh, so this very, very gentle anticlinal fold here that's in sort of the immediate hanging wall of this normal fault at its breakaway scarp here, that anticline is this very faint hump that you see on the surface of the sand model within the subsiding basin. And this much tighter synclinal fold is actually down underneath this area. Uh, this is using a really low angle light, so the shadowing is really, really, really exaggerated. It makes these features look like they're absolutely enormous and like really dramatic. When you actually cut the sand model open after it's finished deforming, that's not exactly the case. Uh, the synclinal fold here is just about as tight as a structure you can get um, with, with extensional movement here. But sure enough, the movement that you see there is very recognizable in the final product. And we'll move it one more time. Okay, so keep your eye on, on this area here. That's where the back rotation is occurring. You stop right before that next deposition occurs. That very, very faint sort of humped anticlinal shape that you can see in the sand model is, is apparent there. All right, so yes, it's subtle, but it is folding, and there is most certainly an upright anticline there with a structural high on it. Uh, in the growth beds on top of it, there's a very faint structural high right there just to the left. And again, that, that dramatic syncline there actually has bedding rotated nearly vertical. Uh, so why does this happen? Uh, the secret is in the different colored sands. It doesn't have to do with their color. It has to do with their, uh, with their mechanical properties, right? So skipping ahead here. The yellow is very, very strong, brittle, highly frictional sand. It's very fine grained. It's actually crushed dolomite. So the little grains of sand are angular. They lock together very, very strongly, produce high internal friction, and they have very steep shear planes or faults cutting through them. Underneath that's glass microbeads. These are little round spheres. Uh, they are comparatively very, very weak. And if you follow this fault coming down, it's steep. And then suddenly it starts to flatten out a little bit. It does not flatten out much, but just that little bit of dip change 
is what's actually causing the uh, the folding to happen here. Now, trying to illustrate that again is is kind of tough. Um, I've drawn like gifs of this before in PowerPoint. Try to do it kind of live action in paint here. Got a foot wall block, and the foot wall block has a fault sort of superimposed on it. We're going to have to draw the hanging wall in here, but it starts off steep, flattens out, steepens again, and then flattens out, right? So let's say we'll, we'll draw a hanging wall onto this, and we'll say that hanging wall has moved in an extensional direction just a little bit. End up with something like that, okay? Now, because the dips of the fault segments change, you end up with these gaps here. Of course, those can't happen. You don't get big voids like that in the earth uh, at the scale of tectonic movement. We're talking about uh, kilometers or miles, big tectonic features. You can't have that open space. So during this movement, that hanging wall, which we'll label there, that hanging wall is going to have to be adjusting its shape uh, to match the, uh, the top of the foot wall there. So get rid of those arrows. What's this going to look like if that adjustment occurs? Well, this part's going to kind of collapse down there, and then this part's going to collapse down too, and that's going to end up producing a more complex shape. So if we white out that old outline, that's the hanging wall geometry that is going to develop above that fault surface that has has changing dip in it and come in here and draw a marker bed in there that's going to be the result so in simplest terms anticline syncline and the reason that pairing of folds develops is steep flatter steeper in the uh, in the fault geometry. Now, this is very simple, very idealized, but that's exactly what is happening uh, in the sand models. And sure enough, we go back to this one. This is the strong stuff, steep fault. This is the weak stuff, shallower fault. And the gray material at the bottom representing sort of like a basement, like a crystalline rock or something like that underneath sedimentary cover. That's strong as well. So you go steep, flatter, steeper. That produces the anticline. And that's also what's producing the synclinal folding, although we have a few more faults here that are still following that steep, flat, steep geometry, right? So comparing a little paint sketch to the real deal, same thing. And indeed, in the real world, at the tectonic scale, where there is sufficient mechanical contrast to cause changes in fault angle at depth, that's how you end up with uh, with folding in uh, extensional settings. Now, depending on how extreme the contrast is, that's going to control how much rotation of bedding and how much folding or deformation is actually possible in these hanging wall blocks. Uh, at the top up here, a whole lot of thick, brittle yellow sand, and then a whole lot of the very weak microbeads even with that big contrast, the anticline that results is pretty subtle. Uh, the syncline is much more dramatic, but there's still limits on, on how much of this folding you're going to see, uh, as well as how much dip uh, is going to be possible uh, there as well. Now, in the bottom example here, there's a lot less yellow sand. Uh, the pink and the blue are not quite as strong and brittle as the yellow. Quite a bit of the weak microbeads in the basin fill here. Also, quite a lot of the weak uh, microbeads in this pre-extension section. And this ends up making even more subtle folds, but it makes sort of a wider and broader folded areas. And it's kind of just this like undulating of this sin extensional sedimentary section there. But again, there's anticlines, there's synclines folding, and it does not require contraction or compression to produce like a buckling type of response. Uh, comparing that sort of weakly folded model uh, to one that is sort of somewhere in between the properties of like uh, of like the yellow sand here and maybe the pink. Down here in the orange again, you got these two gentle anticlines here 
in the hanging wall section. Uh, this would have made a very nice closed fold. You can actually see it will load up the annotator here. Going to need a color black there. You can actually see the change in the fault dips there that is producing what would have been a nice closed fold, but it actually faulted on one of the limbs there. And of course, that's also what you're looking at up at the top here. Um, that's really all there is to it when it comes to producing in models like this uh, uh, extension related folding. And again, that's that's pretty much what you're looking at in the real world. Uh, the one here down in the orange on the left is kind of cool too, because you got steep, subtly flatter, steeper again. And that gives you that anaclinal crest. Get rid of all that stuff. Anaclinal crest there. And a really steep little structure that's almost like a reverse fault. But that too uh, is a product of the mechanical contrast there. Now, get out of a drawing window. If you're to compare extensional folding to compressional folding related to squeezing and shortening a layer pack, there's a lot of differences. Um, really stands out here, this little anticline, uh, sort of almost like a like a detachment fold, like a lift off above this deeper blue layer. The deeper blue is mechanically pretty strong. Here's those weak microbeads again, some stronger stuff up top. End up with these big, big, tall anticlinal folds there. Nothing like that is going to arise in terms of anticlines from extension. Now, the tightness of the syncline here, uh, you know, that that could be approaching uh, some of the dip steepness that you get on limbs here in the in the contractional scenario. But fundamentally, these are these are different type of things. The uh, the folds that you get in the extensional system here are, are like forced folds. They're essentially fault bend folds, meaning that the hanging wall layer pack is just trying to adjust its shape to the underlying fault surface. Whereas down here in the uh, in the contractional model. Uh, it's a response to shortening and the underlying fault surface uh, in the example here particularly uh, is not so much the driver of fold geometry. Uh, in fact, it's very difficult to uh, to produce sort of pure fault bend folds in a compressional sandbox model uh, in the way that you can do it with, a, with an extensional one. And looking at a few more compressional models, that tend to be pretty fold dominated. If you actually look at the little blue layer here, iPhone does not like to take pictures of these things. Too much little grains and texture. This is about as best you can do, but it actually ends up very densely folded. Tiny little buckle folds, but it's kind of wrinkled up like an accordion. Uh, that is an expression of the shortening of the layer pack. Parts of the layer pack do that by faulting. Here you can see this blue layer has stacked on top of itself and other parts of the layer pack do that by uh, by this folding. So it's a response to change in shape of the layer pack, but it's sort of a sort of a different thing from uh, from what you're dealing with with the extensional models here. So running it back one more time to the video, pop this thing out to full screen. You run the whole sequence here. There it is again. There's sort of that anaclinal development, and then you bury that. Running number two here, you can kind of watch for the same type of features. Keeping your eye on this area. And there you can see the development of the anacline as the hanging wall block has to move over that changing fault underneath it. So that one actually produces a, a pretty interesting surface to look at. Uh, this is the orange model that was shown earlier right now. It's going to be pretty subtle on the surface of the model, but right about now, that's where the extension in the hanging wall is occurring that's actually producing the, uh, the anticline down there in the subsurface. So producing these fold structures with what you would call a, a simple extensional model. Uh, what that means is there's just a, a, a base plate down underneath the left side of the model here. It's being pulled away. There's no actual stretching of the base plate underneath the model that would produce more distributed extension. 
just a simple extension will set up. But as long as there are different materials in there that will have different fault angles, folding deformation of the hanging wall block is, uh, is going to result from that. And you're going to end up with fold structures like this. Again, the synclines can be pretty tight. The anaclines will never be that tight, but this does not require any kind of squeezing to happen. Uh, it can result entirely from the stretching and the extension there as long as the faults dip, dip differently. So that's a, an easy experiment to set up. Um, it just requires like a little a little base plate that you can move as long as the materials in the layer pack have different uh have different mechanical properties do you see this in the real world yes most definitely um e extensional folding is is certainly a real thing of course that makes popular exploration or today storage targets uh let me google one up here real quick <laughs> what Google wants us to take a look at. All right. Quantitative basin analysis here. Um, if this is your website, thank you for uh, for putting it together. There you go. There is an extensional anticline, fault coming down steep, flattening out. Sort of the same idea as what, uh, as what the sandbox model showed. Now, this is a mirror image, of course. Um, the way the models are set up, that flattening fault is on the right side of the screen. But all you're interested in here is that dip change. And as the hanging wall block moves onto that flat, that's going to cause the collapse there. And that's what's going to produce that, uh, that anaclinal structure. So there is just one example in the real world at the kilometer scale of the same sort of thing that you're looking at here in the model. Again, just a mirror image. But it's forming uh, through the same geometric processes, right? So check it out. You can Google normal fault anticline, extensional fault anticline, see some more real world examples, but they're very interesting in that they're they're sort of elegantly simple uh, as an expression just of what fault geometry will do to a, to a hanging wall block.